Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I just wanted to do a bit of a follow up video to the one I dropped earlier on today. I felt like there's enough new players around that are going to need help with this champion training event just to do a refresher course. Yeah, some of you might already know this. Apologies if you do, but you might find that you get some tips out of this video anyway, even if you feel like you already know how to do this really well. So let's jump in then. We have got champion training. Um, wrong one, sorry. It's in the events. We've got the champion training event live right now. So, uh, we need 8,000 points to get to the Pythian fragments. That's the 15 in the bag. But there's also a legendary tome here at 12,000, which probably is pretty worth to do. Like if you've got some you know, decent amount of resources, energy, silver, gems, brews, all that type of stuff, then actually I feel like 12,000 is a pretty low level for a legendary tome. Bearing in mind, we're going to be two thirds of the way there anyway. We have to be to be able to get this dude. So just kind of bear that in mind. This is quite a good worth of your worthwhile kind of use of your gems or your resources, as long as it doesn't mean you won't be able to complete the fusion. So first thing to call out, there's two different things. You've got champion training event, which is what's live right now. And then there'll be a champion training tournament going on at the second week of this, this fusion. In the tournament, you can actually use books to gain points. You can gain quite a lot of points from books. And I would say it's not a bad use of your books. But you don't want to be using those today or over the next couple of days. Another thing to call out is a four-day event. We don't have to do it all on day one. Okay, you can pace yourself. But also, you'll be surprised how quickly we can rack up points. And I'm going to show you that in this video today. The other thing to kind of call out here is, obviously, we're trying to be efficient with our our point scoring yeah so there is also right now ice golem running and or will be yeah ice golem's live and tomorrow there's champion chase tournament coming up champion chase and champion training for most people kind of interlock yeah you probably won't understand why until we go through it but they do and this is 2 250 so it might be that you're better off doing ice golem today and then starting your champion training or doing bolt champion training from tomorrow the reason being is I feel like the first thing you want to be doing on champion training is just topping up your food. Yeah, so you should have a load of champions pre-built, pre-ready to, to feed up. Yeah, if you've, been, if you've been prepping well. But you're probably going to be pulling a lot of mystery shards over the next couple of days for champion training events. And that will also dovetail into the champion chase points that you earn. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull up a bunch of mystery shards you're hoping to see blue because it just speeds up the process and ideally you want to see green more than white but that's a really awful pull but all you're doing is you're just kind of filling up your champion groups so that you've got some food to feed it might be that you've already got all of this like loads of food ready to go yeah in an ideal world raid would give us more ability to deal with this kind of food the dross yeah i would I play eternal evolution there's a way better system uh, which hopefully Raid look at and say, yeah, we'll take that on board, where it just like auto feeds stuff like this. But once you've got some of those kind of early level food champions, you get yourself to your tavern, and this is where you start to make use of those brews that you've saved. As a free to player, and I am a free to player, I do a free to play series every year. This is not a free to play account. I'm always on the, the lookout on my brews, yeah, because it, it fluctuates depending on who you've leveled, what you're doing. And you see here, if this was my free-to-play account, I'd be like, well, I've got quite a lot of the Force ones, quite a lot of the Magic ones, but I'm going to steer clear of the Spirit Champions. Yeah. And the first thing you want to be doing, this is, this is exactly how I do it on a free-to-play, on a main, whatever. You take your level one champions. This is not really a champion that I would take into campaign. Yeah, I don't ever. I use brews. So I take my level one. I feed, I feed one brew. Not the green ones, though. We just spoke about that. Blue ones. Yeah, we feed one brew. I then feed three of the champions where I've got a low level of brews because I'm not going to be brewing those up. One brew, three other level ones, and it gets me to my max level 10. Upgrade, and then he's level 10. You can just click off and do that multiple times till it looks like you're, you're kind of always thinning out. Yeah, let's assume I've done all of them. And then we just go in and we upgrade their rank. Again, we're using predominantly the, the food where you've got your lowest level of brews. Yeah, and we're getting a load of two stars together. 
So we get our two stars together. And at this point, I, I stay in the tavern. So two stars, I also generally would brew. Yeah, so I'd brew up to max level. Or you can be, if you don't have a lot of brews, you can just do this through campaign. And it might be a better way to do it through campaign because you're also gaining silver towards artifact events. Depends what your energy, brew, silver, gem situation looks like. Okay, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to do it in the, in the tavern. You could absolutely be doing this in 12-3, farming with your campaign farmer, putting three champions in at the same time. We want to take these to max as well. Okay, and then we're just going to level these up. If you've got loads of brews, you could actually take your level two champions. Before you feed anyone, you could take them and put one brew into them. And what that's going to do is give you 10 levels. That's all giving you champion training points. Yeah, one brew is, is probably worth it, honestly, on a level two, if you want to get as many points as you can. So your food is now halved to max level. Yeah, we would do that with two level twos. One brew in each. And then we go into the upgrade rank. Now, more experienced players or people with more resources won't do that step that I've just done. They'll just they'll just throw in two level ones on level two uh, for a two star. Yeah, because you do get a decent amount of points, but it's not crazy. So more experienced players would do this or people with more resources would do this. But the absolute kind of like, you know, efficient players will do it this way. So level 10s go in and then he goes up to a three star. And what we want to be doing, so this is still a food champion. Don't forget, this is still food. A level three star, you want to put in two brews into your food champions. Two brews. It will get you a ton of points towards champion training. And you want to be doing this for all of your three star food. Yeah. In the same way, for a four star food champion, you want to be pumping in four brews minimum. You could do three. And the reason being, you get the same amount of points in champion training events for the first 10 levels as you do the last 10 levels. But if you see here, if I put one brew in, I gain nine levels. Two brews, I then gain an additional five. Three brews, I gain an additional three levels. Yeah. So you get diminishing returns for the amount of brews you put in. So it comes down to how much resources have you got. But you absolutely don't ever feed someone who's level one as food. You have to max some levels on them to get efficient point scoring. Yeah, so we, we whack in some levels into her. Three or four brews, depends on your brew situation. And you start to get yourself some good points. We then take a five-star champion. If this is food, obviously my son Nick here is not food. But let's assume that he was. We do the same thing. So we're pumping, again, we can do more because there's a, a higher kind of higher bridge, I guess, of potential levels here. What you don't want to be doing is stopping on a kind of really high, close to leveling. So you could go five brews and one one star, and it'll just take you up to level 23. That give you a lot of points. Or I tend to go six or even seven brews into a five star because they're worth a lot of points. Um, some people will do more. Some people actually go all the way up to eight because it just t taps you over the edge. It depends on your brew situation. But if we went up to level eight, that is a ton of points. Yeah, so it's not just, can I get someone level to six star? How many six stars do I need? Like, yeah, I could take people up higher star ranks. Yeah, I could go, right, my Leo here. Level him up using my chickens. This would be the least efficient way you could possibly do something. Or level up using my food, but it's, they're all level one. It would be horrendous use of my resources. Okay, so that's not the way to do it. The way to do it is to level the food. So that's doing it in the tavern already. Let me just show you the champion training. I was on 60 points before, just from showing you on a couple of individual champions, I'm up to 385 points. It's actually very quick to get to 8,000 points if you're doing this method. You can do the same thing though in campaign. So the, the benefit of the tavern is speed really that's that's basically it it's speed it's efficiency that type of stuff but campaign and and i guess it saves energy and gems for other stuff in fusion or fragment events the benefit of campaign is you're building silver whilst you're doing the leveling yeah so 
it's, it's a kind of like the silver gain helps you for the artifact events and for generally kind of leveling up your gear so you kind of like it depends where you are on on resources but you want to come into the highest level you can farm efficiently honestly until you get to brutal 12 3 if you are a later game player and you can farm nightmare 12 6 then nightmare 12 6 is where it's at honestly this is more efficient for the leveling to energy method but you'll get less silver back brutal 12 3 is more efficient for silver to energy while still leveling well so that's that's your kind of trade-off there's honestly there's not that many farmers that farm 12 6 efficiently so i use my ethos here who's kind of like you know pretty stacked on stats yeah he's like a pretty beast mode ethos and he can do it there's other champions like a lot some of the defensive nuka style champions can do it but the trouble is you, you take an absolute beating on 12 6 if you start taking hits you even need someone who's very tanky or you need someone that can absolutely smack these enemies into the ground and has got multiple aoe's like uh, my ethos here so ethos can do it for me if i didn't have these silly shamals in here doing a whole bunch of retribution hits it's normally like about 15 seconds but you know to to do it with uh to do nightmare 12 6 it's a really good way to farm food but you need a decent build to be able to do that but for most people it's going to be brutal 12 3 and again you can farm your food up here so you know it's just going to be a use of your energy and i guess this is something that people don't realize you can use your multi battles here and be pretty damn efficient with it so you could tell it to use gems to restore energy you can tell it to just sell all the gear but this is something that people don't realize exists you can hit edit q and be like right these are the ones i want to level and it's going to be in this order anyone that i'm clicking on here is going to be leveled to max so you need to bear that in mind as well but i might want to level all of these two stars to max level so i do that I hit confirm and what it will do is it will sub in the different champions once they're maxed it will sub them out and it will sub in the next three there's actually a tool called rsl helper which is even better than this because you can actually tell it to sub out your food you can only do this on a pc by the way i, I don't not sure if rsl helper even works on a mac but you can tell it to sub out your food once it gets to a certain level so i could be like you know what for my two stars here i want to level them to level 10 and then sub them out and bring in another group of two stars that i want to level to level 10 because i'm doing an efficiency thing with three stars you want to take them up to level 15 four stars you want to take them up to level 18 five stars you want to take them up to around level 23 24 um but with rsl helper you can literally just be like sub them out once i hit that level because i've gained my champion training points and they're food champions anyway i don't need the max level some food champions you need to be max level because you're going to feed them up to the next stage some food champions you need to be kind of leveled to a level where you're just gaining efficiency of points and the craziest thing is if you do it in this way not only are you kind of dovetailing in with the different events you end up gaining about four times the champion training points that you would get than if you just went here's my level 50 use my level one food across the board and take him up to six star about four times the efficiency so you'd be insane not to do it absolutely insane and you'll find you know over a four day period not only will you get your six stars that you want you'll also get yourself um the the, the fragments you need yeah you'll just get the fragments you need a ton easier and without using as many resources there you go guys i've been hell hades hope that was helpful i'll see you later